And yet they're adding like more Chip and Joanna gains. <laughs> like, does the world need more shiplap? So we're doing a little early Thursday news for you. And we realize that as we are speaking with you, there's probably stuff that's breaking. So we yes. might miss things like all this Warner Media discovery stuff, but we can talk with some certainty about this whole Batgirl fiasco, mm. which would be a great name for an indie rock band. <laughs> or a Robert Ludlum novel. <laughs> right, Batgirl fiasco, yes. I saw them six years ago at Coachella, they were okay. <laughs> but um, it sucks the way this went down. So basically they made a whole Batgirl movie starring yep. Leslie Grace, who was so lovely in In the Heights, yep. playing Barbara Gordon. Like a $90 million movie. Yeah, directed by the Ms. Marvel guys. Right. A, a deal in Bilal. And like, they just shelved it. Like, they're just like, we're not going to put it on streaming. We're not going to put it in theaters. We made a movie that you cannot see. Yeah. Uh, also, the the Scoob sequel, which I know is of less interest to most yeah. people than the back of the book, it was a holiday movie. So that puts it on my radar, uh -huh. uh, which was apparently completely done and like already screened to test audiences and did OK. So what I'm hearing from I, I never understand the business part. Like, I'm not one of those people who can come on and explain to you about, the, oh, well, the fiscal year ended and the blah, 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 mm -hmm. you know, but what I'm hearing from folks is that apparently they want to just write off these productions. And usually when you talk about like a studio takes a write off, it means like they declared a loss because they put out a movie and it flopped. But for them to like actually write off what they spent on these movies, they can't put them anywhere where people have to pay to see them, oh. which means they can't put them in theaters and they can't put it on HBO Max. So does that mean they'll air on the CW someday? Or does it mean that they just go into the salt mine? I don't know. Can somebody else come and pick it up? Or is it like an IP thing because she's Batgirl, so it has to be DC, so it, it has to be Warner? I, it, I mean... it is an IP thing, although there is precedent where the where Warner Brothers made the Aqua Teen Hunger Force movie and then decided mm. not to release it, and another like indie distributor came in and picked it up. All of this to say, though, is like I think we all go through our lives enjoying movies, knowing in the back of our heads that it's called show business and not show art. Mm -hmm. But we rarely see this naked version of like, fuck you, we want money. And yeah. it doesn't matter what we've made, what people worked on for right. years, you know, all of that stuff. Too bad. Oh, you're a fan. Fuck you. You know, so, uh, yeah, I just I, I, I want when people get very excited about their superheroes or their boy wizards or their whatever, and they get very attached to the brand mm -hmm. and the corporation behind it. The corporation does not give a shit about you. And this is one of those moments where it's where they're flying that flag very high. No, it's, it's very cynical. It's very sad. I mean, and it looks worse because you have a young woman of color in uh -huh. this. When you look at Miss Marvel, which Adil and Bilal directed, yeah. like it's thrilling. It's as you have said, probably the best Marvel series so yeah. you've got a precedent of success here right and the, and the numbers were good too so it wasn't even just like it was yeah. qualitatively good people tuned in people yeah. watched the show so yeah this this all just smacks of like discovery bumbling in and not really understanding how studios work and everybody in the streaming sphere running scared you know mm -hmm. the second that netflix had one bad quarter it was like all right fuck it we're gonna cancel all these cartoons we're gonna not do auteur driven movies we're gonna give you more gray mans right. you know and so Warner Brothers, and this happens to Warner Brothers so often. I mean, like in our lifetimes, we have seen them owned by like Ted Turner and Time Warner or, or Time Inc. rather. AT&T. AT yeah. You know, and all this stuff like, you know, I was I was working for Filmstruck and then AT&T came in and there weren't no Filmstruck anymore. So like this is just this constant right. thing that this studio in particular seems to be buffeted about by larger corporate forces, but never in quite as shitty a manner as they are now, I have to say. <laughs> and of all the streamers, like HBO Max is the easiest to navigate like mm. and they are the whole other part of the story today is that they're like quietly just pulling their own original oh, content yeah so yeah yeah movies like an American Pickle mm -hmm. or Lockdown like, the Witches Lockdown was pretty good yeah Super, super Intelligence is not great Super. No. I mean, there are some that we can never see again and that'd be fine <laughs> but like it's weird like it's not like there's a finite amount of space on a streaming service right yeah. like you should put your own stuff out there for the world right again it's like does it, is this just like that they just want to like walk away from these movies and 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 write them off for tax purposes I don't know uh, again this is where I always fly the physical right. media flag 
Charm City Kings, one of those movies is getting yanked, is coming out on DVD this month, so you can have it forever in a way that HBO Max is apparently not going to let you do. Uh, You could buy The Witches, you could buy a few, but like American Pickle, Lockdown, several of those not available on physical media, so too bad, so sad. Um, Yeah, this just it's just, it's appalling, and it's appalling in that it's one thing to like, oh, you know, they canceled you know, film struck or they decided not to make this movie, but these are like finished films mm-hmm. we're talking about in some case films that were released into the world and are now like whoop, pulled back in. And I, it's, it's, this is a terrible way to run a business. And yet they're adding like more Chip and Joanna Gaines. <laughs> like, does the world need more shiplap? I don't think so. I think we've got all the drywall we need. Yeah. I, I, the, the, <laughs> They're, they're being taken over by this company that doesn't get it and doesn't get what they're doing. And and so, yeah, so now HBO Max is going to become like a, a little corner of Discovery Plus next to like my 600 pound tumor or whatever the fuck they show. <laughs> I don't know. It's awful. It's very disheartening. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. One of the, one of the other many elements of this is that, you know, they're going to have layoffs. They're going to have restructuring because mm-hmm. of redundancies. But then like they're all on board with the Chip and Joanna Gaines Magnolia <laughs> Network. If only were like Magnolia films they were adding, that yeah, would no be kidding. great. They've got good taste over there. But no, this well, is like more home decoration stuff. And sadly, I do know this from people I know over the years that have worked at Warner Brothers, like these rounds of layoffs come around every several years, usually after one of these corporations comes in and decides they're going to like run things more smoothly and lay off people so it's like that that is the most sadly predictable part of all this which i'm sure if you're already if you're a long timer at warner brothers you've seen this before Mm -hmm. and one of these days you know your head is going to be on the block i suppose yes leslie grace a very gracious young woman put a Mm. very lovely post out on instagram thanking everyone for their support and saying what a a pleasure it was to bring this character to life and hopefully the world will see it someday so i hope that too i'm like i can't now i really really can't wait to see this and i hope that we can in some capacity um, but they've also still... the want to see factor, heaven knows. <laughs> right. And, and we are now more so in the Joker business because Lady Gaga posted a teaser today for, as you're fond of calling it, Joker Pret a Porte. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a for release date. Deux. Yeah, for Lyadu. And so she posted like a little thing of, you know, Joker and they're playing cheek to cheek in the background. And there's the release date of October 4th, 2024. So, like, that DC character. The world can get more of. Yeah, not going anywhere. <laughs> that one, that one we've got. Is um, she the, playing Harley Quinn? Do we know this, or is it still unsaid? I don't know who she's playing, but mm. she has confirmed. And if so, how does Margot Robbie feel about that? Uh, probably happy to not work to have to work with uh, Joaquin <laughs> Phoenix. I don't know. Who knows? I, I was thinking. I was thinking about Jared Leto, and it all got confused. It's of, very it's the ha- House of Joker. <laughs> too many Jokers. Mm. Um, like too many cooks. So um, we have that, and then the weird Al Yankovic biopic is going to debut at Toronto. We know yes. that. And before it premieres on Roku Channel. Speaking of streaming, that is weird. That's not theaters. Roku Channel. But I like the idea of Daniel Radcliffe playing Weird Al Yankovic. Oh, for sure. Yeah. That sounds like fun. And we've got a bit of sad news for you. Vin Mm. Scully, the legend, the absolute best at what he did, died this week at 94, a longtime Dodgers broadcaster. He he was their broadcaster for 67 years. Wow. And he died at his home in Hidden Hills. And I know you're not a big baseball fan. Um, but but truly, I knew his name. <laughs> there you go. Um, but truly, he. I mean, I grew up in L.A. It's the voice of my childhood, and anybody mm. who, who lived here, it's it's a lot of nostalgia. Just just hearing him like talk about Farmer John hot dogs, like it's just like <laughs> it just brings back so many memories. But he, what he did, he made it look so effortless. Sure, he yeah. would just he was just him by himself. Most broadcast booths have like a play by play guy and a color guy who right. used to be a player or manager or whatever to explain like strategy. Um, he did it. All by himself and effortlessly. And it was just a, an intimate conversation between you and him. And he would just tell stories about various players. And it was like just water flowing through a stream. It was just like folksy and intimate and authentic. And truly nobody else can do this. He made it look so easy and it yeah. must have been so hard. As people who spend much of our lives talking into microphones and not live, I think we have to tip our hat to somebody who's that good at it. 